when I talk about valuation, I know a lot of folks think they know what it means. I talk to a lot of new investors, financial advisors, even the experts out there, and they always tend to value companies at the stock's market cap. The company and its success are defined by the stock price. And if the stock is up, the company's doing well. And if the stock is down, this is a terrible company, of course. As a value investor, I'm gonna now teach you how I've learned to separate the company from the stock. And this concept doesn't go over well when you're talking to normal people in your life. We end up firing up a conversation about a stock. They tend to only mention the stock's past performance. And then when I tell them what I think the company's truly valued at, they look at me like, what the hell are you talking about? A good example of this is Tesla. Publicly traded companies have a certain number of shares outstanding in the world. They're basically like pieces of a pie. And these numbers can get into the tens of millions of shares. If you buy a share, you become a shareholder. You are literally a co-owner of the company. It's revenue, it's assets, it's debt, and of course the cash it has in its bank. If a company gets liquidated or bought out, you literally get a deposit in your account equal to what your share value is worth. A company's market cap is very simple. It's their total number of shares in the world times their current stock price. For example, when I filmed this video, Tesla's share count was around 1.036 billion shares, and its stock price was 745 bucks per share. We multiply these two numbers together, and Tesla's market cap is 768 billion. This is what the world thinks Tesla is worth. Here's the weird part. Tesla's only delivered 310,000 vehicles in 2022. In that same time frame, Ford Motor Company has sold more than 760,000 vehicles. That's double what Tesla's done. But Ford's market cap is only $48 billion. So what the hell gives? Why is Ford's market cap 1 16th of that of Tesla? This is the definition of valuation and overvaluation. These two companies literally make almost the same product, yet one company is valued 16 times more than the other. And remember, as an investor, you never wanna overpay. So here's another example. I personally own shares of a company called Activision Blizzard. They make video games. Microsoft earlier this year proposed a deal to buy all of Activision Blizzard. Basically, they're acquiring the company. They set their buy price, and each shareholder of Activision was set to get $95 per share. But why do I get $95? Microsoft has informed me and the world and every other Activision Blizzard shareholder that our percentage of ownership of Activision Blizzard is worth $95 per share. And this is a unique part because this is a buyout. Most times you really don't know what your company's worth. But Microsoft has told us they're willing to pay that much for this company. And again, other companies are subjective to thoughts and people's emotions and the market, but this one's pretty finite. Normally valuation is subject to how the company's performing, how their sector's performing, how needed is their product. It's subject if the CEO gets caught up in some fraud. It's subject to the excitement around the company or maybe lack thereof. People are enamored with Elon Musk, the future of electric cars and Tesla overall. No one is excited about Hewlett Packard, the printing company. It's boring, it's not in the news and no one cares about them. All of these concepts make up a company's valuation, but it doesn't mean that the company is properly valued. So you might see this in your personal life. Say you wanna buy a pair of shoes. On Nike.com, they cost 120 bucks. At Dick's Sporting Good, they cost 110 and you can get a 25% off coupon. The savvy internet shopper that you are, you're really proud that you got a $120 pair of shoes for something maybe around 100 bucks. The shoes had a valuation of 120, but you didn't pay that. You got a great deal. And at no point would you have said, I'd love to pay $140 for these shoes. Stocks are the same thing except the buy points are usually flipped. The excitement around a company usually causes people like you and me to buy in and causes an elevated share price and overvaluation. Foolish investors start paying almost anything for the stock or, or pair of shoes we're talking about. And the more the price goes up, the more we get excited about it. The age old concept of buying low and selling high completely goes out the window. And you've seen this with the housing market after COVID. There's a frenzy of buying, the fear of missing out sets in, and people start offering way over asking price and waiving inspections to buy a $400,000 house that cost just 220,000 three years ago. Perhaps you even did this recently. And this is the difficulty with investing, whether you're buying a home or becoming a co-owner of a business by buying its stock. It is your job to not follow all the lunatics who are piling in to buy exciting companies with no revenue and a bright future and resist the urge to buy a 1200 square foot house in Ohio for 450 grand. I'm sure in your life, you're constantly trying to pay less for things, but when it comes to buying stocks, 
houses, and exciting things, we always wanna pay more. Here at Everything Money, Paul, Mo, and myself are providing you the tools and techniques to avoid overpaying for companies because nobody likes to overpay for anything. Tesla fanboys have been saying that stock is an auto buy for years, no matter what the price is. But even in the first two quarters of 2022, when the company had record sales for cars, the stock price has fallen in half. It was overvalued to begin with. And even when they sold a record amount of cars, your investment would have gone down by 50%. And some would argue it's still currently overpriced. So what the greatest investors in the world do is they look for abnormalities in the market. They wanna find a really great company that's currently on sale, like that set of shoes you bought. They wait for companies to fall out of favor. They wait for them to be considered boring companies. Or maybe when there's a false negativity surrounding the company, like nobody wants it anymore or it's dying, that's when it might fall into undervalued territory and this is how the most amount of money is made. Unfortunately, there's a ton of so-called financial experts on YouTube, and they keep fanning the flames of your excitement by overestimating the value of lots of companies and saying they're gonna go to the moon. And this perpetuates a frenzy of buying and makes you click on their videos. They conjure up these grand stories of how great these companies are gonna be and how the stock price is just gonna go up by 100X. But they rarely bring up concepts about downside risk. We've seen companies like Peloton, Palantir, Tattooed Chef, and most of Kathy Wood's stocks fall in the upwards of 60, 70, 80, 90%. Their valuations were too high when everyone was buying and shareholders got the rug pulled from underneath them. Here at Everything Money, we've been trying to provide you with a simplified process that helps you give the proper valuation of companies and teaches you the patience to wait until it's on sale. And you know those Activision Blizzard shares I own? The ones where I'm gonna get 95 bucks a share when Microsoft buys them? That deal might not go through, but here's the key. I bought the shares for $74 a piece. I purchased them on sale, just like those shoes. And in correlation, while the fanboys of Tesla of the world lost half their money recently, the Warren Buffetts of the world were buying that boring company called HPQ, which consequently has gone up 54% in the last year. But of course, what would Warren Buffett know? He's only worth like $90 billion. So don't fall victim to this. Don't listen to your stupid friends. They don't know what they're talking about, but now you do. If this resonates with you, make sure you gently fondle that thumbs up and give the channel a subscribe. And check out this next video on how this economic downturn can be the opportunity of a lifetime for you and your portfolio.